Today I'm going to share my Smart Art Box project using graphite, ink, and water-soluble graphite. This was a fun one. Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. If you are unfamiliar with Smart Art Box, it is a monthly subscription box where every month they send you a box full of full-size supplies. Everything that you need to complete a project. One of my favorite things about these boxes is that they are not just going to dump a bunch of supplies on you that you have no idea what to do with and you're just gonna have to try to figure it out on your own. You get this handy brochure that goes over the history of whatever style you're working in. It gives you some project pointers. It goes over the supplies that you're using. Whole bunch of information in there and then on the back it goes through step-by-step -step instructions on how to complete your project so if it's something you've never worked on before or worked with before you're not going to feel totally lost which is kind of a big deal so basically you're getting a whole art class in a box and just for transparency this video is being sponsored by smart art box so let's go ahead and take a look at what came in this month's box or last month's i think this might have been november's box i'm so far behind on these i'm really working to get caught up so for these, I didn't look to see what was coming that month on social media, so it was really like getting a birthday present. I had no idea what was going to be in this box. I was so excited when I saw. So we first have this brochure, which we've already gone over. We've got this bottle of ink. Ink is always handy to have around. Then we've got the Derwent Graphic Tin set of six. This is actually the new Derwent Graphic pencils, so those are the really good ones, the new and improved. We've got a water brush for mixing. And then we've got some Derwent water-soluble graphite pencils. The box came with two of those. They are the HB and 2B. Then we've got a pack of Prismacolor erasers. Can always use more erasers. The other water-soluble graphite there. Two pieces of Crescent Premium watercolor board. These are eight by tens. I liked this board a lot to work on. They were smooth, but still had enough tooth that the pencil really stuck to. They didn't warp when I added water. And a sketch on was really nice. When I drew out the fish, all of my graphite lines erased really, really cleanly. And I had lines everywhere as I sketched him out. So that is definitely a really nice paper to work on. I went over my light sketch lines with a darker graphite pencil. This is just one of the regular Derwent graphics. So that when I went over with the water soluble graphite, I didn't lose all of these lines. I'll still be able to see them through. So once I get everything loosely sketched out there, I can go ahead and start with the water soluble graphite. And water soluble graphite, if you have not worked with it, it is so much fun. The little device squirts air so that you don't have to blow on your work in order to get little shavings off. So kind of a cool thing. But anyway, moving on. So I'm sketching in my water soluble graphite and I don't really need to worry about my pencil lines showing. I don't have to work in tiny little circles like I would with colored pencil. I can pretty much scribble. And once the water goes over it, everything blends out really smooth. And you can do this in multiple layers. You can start light, let it dry all the way, and then keep building up till you get darker and darker. Okay, I'm holding the pencil to the side just so I get more surface area of that pencil touching. I'm gonna leave some of the water or some of the paper white where the water is going, just so that it's not just all one solid color. I wanna get some variation in there. Got a paper towel ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and go a little bit darker on the edges. So I've used the darker pencil here. And I don't have to push very hard. You can go pretty light with this. There's enough tooth on this paper that it really catches the pencil. So now I'm using the water brush and I'm starting with the light areas and I'll work into the dark. If you start with the dark, too much of that gets picked on the up on the brush and you end up blending more over the light areas than you may have intended. And I'm just lightly squeezing the water out of that brush as I work. It gives you a really nice soft look. And quickly, this whole project took me maybe 25 minutes or so in real time. This is, is such a fun way to go if you want to get something done very quickly like I did here. But you can use these same mediums or same tools and do something that's very, very detailed too. You really have a lot of options with these, these supplies. I think I want to use these same supplies and do one that I spend a lot of time on and get a lot of tiny detail. I'm pretty sure you'll see me doing a water-soluble graphite and ink piece in the very near future for a tutorial. Now I'm using more water than you typically would want to because I do want to get almost that watercolor look where the, you, it's kind of blotchy. Okay, 
Again, over here, I'm using a lot more water where I want it to get really light. Whenever I'm doing something that's a new medium that I'm not used to combining two together like this, I always go with something that's not too elaborate. I just experiment. I don't care if I mess up. I don't care if it's perfect. This isn't something I'm planning on selling. I just want to experiment. And I don't want the pressure of everything needing to be perfect. So every time you see me use something, a medium that I've never used before, I always start with a very simple product or project that I really don't worry about how it comes out. You want to take that pressure out so that you can learn from it. If you're too worried about making mistakes, you're not going to learn as much as if you just go ahead and experiment and have fun. Shading around the eyes here. You can see holding the pencil to the side again, just so that I get more surface area covering. I can make less pencil strokes. It makes it go a lot faster. I'm almost scribbling through here again. Very, very messy. And it's really fun. If you are used to working and doing projects that are super, super detailed, it is so much fun to occasionally step back and do something like this that's a lot looser, that you're just not focused on the tiny stuff. It's something that was done very quickly and it was so much fun to do. So again, with the water brush going over this. Now, I don't need to worry about trying to make the graphite too dark yet because I'm going to be able to use the ink for a lot of this. The graphite I found to be way easier for me to control than the ink, but part of that is that I'm not really used to working in ink. So that's going to take some practice for sure until I get to the point where I feel remotely competent with it. I, I tend to go overboard when I use ink. I've used it a couple times in the past on different projects, and I always go overboard with it. That is definitely a less is more situation. It's better to add less and then slowly build up if you think you want more black. That black gets so dark. So here, this is still just the water-soluble graphite, and you can see even that, it gets really, really dark. This is why I like that medium so much. You have so much control over how you can keep things very, very light, but you can also go super dark, much darker than you would get with traditional graphite. Now, I can use the regular graphite pencils to come through with detail, but I've never found that I really needed to. I do like regular graphite for the outlines when I don't want to lose them, where I really want to make sure they don't get blended out. But other than that, I prefer just using the water-soluble graphite. If I'm going to use them, I tend to stick just with those and not regular graphite. Just personal preference there. Now I need to let this dry and I'm going to go ahead and start with the ink. Now the directions on the Smart Art Box said to add ink to the, the water pen or the water brush. I didn't do that because that sounded like a massive mess waiting to happen. I'm not even sure how, because the, the ink doesn't have a dropper. So I'm really, that just seemed a little bit impractical for me. So being that I'm a bit of a freak wanting everything to stay nice and clean, I decided just to dip the brush, the tip of the water brush into the ink and that worked really well. I kind of squeezed it and tried to suck some up into it, which may have worked a little, but mostly I just kept, I found it was easier just to dip the brush into the ink. See, it gets really, really dark. So it's easy to go a little bit too far with it. You've got to be careful. And you can wipe some of the ink off onto your paper towel so that it's not too dark to start with. You can even mix water with it to thin it out so that it's not so, so dark. Remember with brushes like this, this one is a round. It works similar to a liner brush as far as how much detail you can get. The harder you push, the thicker your line will be. If you want nice thin, thin lines, then you just barely want to let the tip of those bristles touch your paper. And on a style like this, I try to keep my hand a little bit more loose and not too steady. Too steady can come out very stiff and make the work 
just not have a very nice natural flow to it. So I let my hand be a little bit stiff, pretend you drank way too much caffeine, just get a little bit shaky there, and that gives you a nice result when you're trying to do this loose look. Same thing when painting. If you're doing something that's somewhat impressionistic, don't, don't try to be too controlling. It just doesn't look very, it doesn't look right. So loose and messy works. I mean, if this is the style you're going to go with, stick with loose and messy. Don't try to get too much detail, too controlling when painting this style. Now, one thing I did here, I ended up setting my hand in it. I didn't realize that some of the ink was still wet, and I ended up making a huge black blotch in the water. So you have a few options when you screw something up as majorly as I did there. Don't throw the piece away. A lot of people go, oh my gosh, I just ruined it. I'm going to throw it out. Don't. Figure out a way to work with it. And I think that's such a big deal. When you're an artist, be creative. Let that be an exercise in creativity. Figure out how to make that work work it into your piece. For me, I just worked it into the fin. There's that big black smudge. I turned it into part of the fin. I made the fin much larger. And I could have spent a little bit more time. You'll see where, you can really still see where it was. If I went over it with the black a little bit more after I start with the fin, apparently we're taking a break right now. I'm not sure where I went. But you can spend a little bit more time hiding it better. So the first thing I tried doing was using water. There's only water on here, and I'm smudging it out so that it is darkening the background, but it's letting it hide a little bit more so it's not as high of contrast. Pull some of that background color there. So that tones it down some. It's not as obvious as when white was behind it, but that's still obviously you can really see. So next I'm going to turn part of that into the fin. Oh, let some of it run off. Turns out I used a bit too much water. Just dab that a bit with the paper towel and let that smudge in. Okay, so now I'm taking my water-soluble graphite and I'm just going to go right over that. We'll just make the fin a little bit bigger. You guys would know the difference, but if I gave this to my mom, she would never know I screwed that up. darkening a few areas in there and then I can go back over those with water which makes it come out really dark and that's something to be aware of when you're working with water soluble graphite it will look fairly light once you go over it with water it gets to where it's almost black it gets very very dark so experiment with that a bit before you do a project that you're too worried about because it, it definitely takes some getting used to See how dark that goes? And there are a lot of different ways that you can redraw that fin to fix it. But it's better to do that than just to throw it away. I mean, technically, I can still give this to my mom and she would think it was wonderful. I could probably paint something with my feet. My mom would think it was wonderful too, so I guess that's not saying much. But it now doesn't really look like so much like a screw up, like, oh, wow, that's a big black blotch. It just looks like a weird fin. I prefer weird fin over big black blotch. Darkening some of these areas up again. And you can take the ink and thin it out in like a little water well or a little palette. You thin that with water and it'll give you a lighter gray tone instead of going straight to the dark black. You don't have to use the ink straight if you want something to be a little bit lighter. But in this case, I've got the water-soluble graphite, which are a little bit easier to control, at least for me. So it makes more sense for me to get my really light areas with that versus the ink. And with this, with a water brush, you just squeeze it and squeeze some of the water out. You can create big globs of water coming out or just small amounts. It depends on what you want, but you have a lot of options with that. It's a pretty versatile tool. I've got a few others that I've used for the last couple of years on and off. They're pretty handy, especially if you're going to go be sketching. Wow, grammar issues there. If you're going to go sketch somewhere outdoors where you don't want to bring a tub of water and all of your brushes, you could just use this, like with ink tense, water-soluble graphite, watercolor pencils, anything like that. These water brushes, wow, I could not think of the word. The water brushes are really, really nice for something like that. If you're painting in your studio, I go back and forth as to whether or not I prefer those or regular brushes. 
throwing in a few of these darker scales here. And when you draw fish scales, try not to be too uniform there. It's easy to want every scale perfectly shaped and all the same exact size. That actually doesn't look very natural. Just these little dabs and having some of them overlap looks better in most cases than doing those perfectly shaped. Every single scale is exactly the same. That doesn't look too, very natural. Darkening up some of this here. Experiment with different types of brush strokes. Sometimes dabbing looks better. Sometimes you want to make an actual brush stroke. Sometimes little dots. Little things like that, that variation really makes the work look nice. And you can sit and fuss with this. I mean, I could add a ton of detail over it or leave it how it is. That's one of the things I like so much with water soluble graphite and ink. You can, you just have so many options on the style that you want to paint. It's really, really easy to adjust. Like colored pencil, it's harder to be loose with how you work. With anything where it is a water soluble medium, you've got a lot of freedom there, which can definitely be a lot of fun. Few more details in here and I'm calling this done. Oh, more bubbles. Okay, now we're done. So there is my finished painting. And I have one more board in the box. I'm probably going to use these same tools, like I said earlier, and make something that's very, very detailed that I'll spend hours and hours on versus 25 minutes. Um, so we can see both, but that will be in the future. If you would like more information on the Smarter Art Box or to sign up to get your own box sent to you every month, I have a link below in the video description along with a coupon code that will get you a discount off your subscription for life. I also have listed all of the countries that this is available to. Have you subscribed yet? If not, I have a handy button right there. It's round, has an orange arrow going to it. I forgot what it looked like. If you click on that, that'll help you to keep up to date with all of my new art videos every single week.